to Playbook for Performance, the official podcast of Shauna Corden, the Joan of Arc for corporate healing and performance. Join the quest to make work fun again by preparing leadership for engaging workplaces. And now, your host. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the Playbook for Performance podcast. I'm your host, Shauna Corden. This month we're talking all about team coaching and today we're really talking about the topic of effective communication in teams. Now you might be thinking, you know, we've been taking communication 101 ever since we formed as a team, but don't forget that there are multiple generations in the workplace that all communicate differently. It's sort of like having a merger of five different generations and what one generation prefers is totally different and maybe even offensive to another generation. And so each team needs to agree on some standards about how they will behave collectively with one another. And we're going to go through all of that today. So let's get started. On the topic of effective communication, really what's at stake? We're gonna talk about how to do it, what to do, where to do it, and responding. So let's start about with number one. Do you know if your communication is effective? So some clear definitions to demonstrate that you're all on the same page is that you've got a shared purpose. Everybody knows why you're doing what you're doing, why you're trying to do it in that way. Uh, Brene Brown has a great term that I use all the time called paint the shed. If I ask someone to paint the shed, I want them to tell me what painting the shed looks like to them. Are they painting the shingles, the door, the windowsill, the shed, what color, how do I know it's done, what kind of prep, all that kind of stuff. They really need to be able to articulate back to you what their understanding of their mission is to make sure that the two of you are on the same page. And it gets worse when there's more team members that are involved. So we all really need to dialogue about that. Obviously, misunderstandings are avoided if your communication is effective. So expectations defined and the ability to meet them confirmed. So one of the mistakes we make as leaders is we just kind of operate with these expectations or that are out there, we really haven't confirmed that we have agreement and that's what we're looking for. And then finally, the third bullet that I would say that demonstrates whether your communication is effective is you're enabling this collaborative environment where if everyone understands the purpose or mission behind what they're doing, they know where the opportunities lie and they can volunteer those and act on them. They can avert any risks that are there that might be present because they all know what to avoid. So those are some really good indicators that your team's on the right track, they're communicating well. Um, generally that makes everybody happy at work. So let's talk about how to communicate. So clearly, no pun intended, clarity and conciseness are at the top of the list. Um, let's make sure that we're not using lazy language, that we're being obtuse, that we say the thing or something like that. We need to be precise with our vocabulary. I would also say we want to communicate what's necessary and sufficient. We don't want to necessarily embellish and give the background and context for everything, sometimes that's not necessary. If a screw needs to be turned, it just needs to be turned. We don't need to know that it's you know, part of something huge at all times. However, if it is very particular and it does require some real precise work, then we do want to give that context in that situation. So, Try to be clear, concise, not overly embellish. Uh, the second is the active listening piece. So recently, I think in the last year, there's been articles from HBR and others talking about how important active listening is. 
I think as coaches, we take this for granted because we're like, well, that's what we do. <laughs> we're listeners. But so what do we mean when we talk about active listening? It's not that you're just tracking and you're following along with what's happening, but you're able to confirm or, or your audience is able to confirm what's been said and track along. Now, different cultures uh, respond in active listening differently. So set an expectation. You would like them to restate what they heard before they amplify your statement or ask a question, things like that. Uh, active listening really means that it, they are active in their listening. They're not just passively nodding. Uh, nodding could mean, yeah, 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 I get it, move on, or yes, I'm really with you, keep going, I'm so excited, or I'd rather be doing something else. You know, And I've worked with lots of teams where we, we ask them, what does silence mean? And it could mean everything from I'm distracted or I'm multitasking, I'm angry and I don't want to say anything because my voice will betray my anger, um, or... I'm, I'm in agreement, I don't have anything to add, keep going. So we have to be really emphasizing the importance of active listening and ask the team to respond to such. Um, I think regular updates are super important. Probably the number one thing is what decisions have been made, what is the status of our action items, and what are the trends? Do we see it continuing to go well the next couple of weeks? Is it starting to decline? Are things going poorly? You know, what's going on there so that we're not surprised? Uh, channels. Um, I'm deep into David Allen and I'm sorry I've forgotten his name, the co-author of the Getting Things Done with Teams. Um, and I can recommend this book. I think it's great if you're a Getting Things Done fan or a GTD nerd. Um, you will love the team book because it's basically like this on teams. So, um, but it's this idea of there's appropriate communication in appropriate channels. Um, we don't do urgent things via Slack. We text or call when it's more urgent. If it has to be documented, you know, we need it in email or something or Google whatever your team has decided the standards are. And if you haven't decided the standards, do that. Do that right away. <laughs> so have some policies. Um, determine, you know, what deserves a new thread on Slack, things like that. Um, timing, probably the, one of the most important things I talk about with leaders is you get paid the big bucks to be basically on call 24-7. You may work weekends, you may work evenings. Your employees do not get paid the big bucks to do that. So set an expectation that you don't believe that they need to respond until normal office hours. If it's more urgent, then you need to say so. But if this is a regular occurrence, you're either not on top of it or you're abusing your employees. So let's talk about that. And so it's, it's been, it's been a bad cultural practice in a lot of organizations to have the badge of honor of who got the least amount of sleep because they were working so hard. You know, that doesn't do anybody any favors. So I would say have a life, have some boundaries, be very particular about what's expected, how soon people can expect a response, things like that. Um, and that's, that can take four or five hours, but it can save lots and lots of headaches in the future. So definitely worth a conversation or two. Uh, the next part is about feedback. You know, what's helpful to people? What's too much? What's not enough? So give people feedback about how well meetings went. They had an agenda. Give them feedback on how poorly they went because the purpose of the meeting wasn't well defined. Give them feedback if not the, the wrong people were invited to the meeting and not the right ones, things like that. We really need to give people feedback on that and that it's in the best interest. It's not a personal attack. It's this is my observation. This is what I think needs to change or how things would be better if we implemented this practice. Finally, uh, the last piece about communication 
non-verbally. Uh, one of my colleagues that ended up climbing Everest 30 years ago, probably now, um, had a, a, a rule that he suggested to our team to read emails with a happy voice inside your head, right? It's, it's so hard when we read the written word, whether it's a text message, whether it's uh, an email to understand the tone that the writer conveyed or intended to convey. And if we're in a bad mood, we may misinterpret their text as something even rude or offensive when really it was just our attitude. So read emails with a happy voice inside your head, I think is a, is a good rule. Assume positive intent, I think is another good rule. But if you have an issue, be brave enough to raise it directly. Do not do this passive aggressive back channeling, triangulation, etc. Um, if you're unhappy, say so. And you can preface it with, with saying, I'm having a bad day. It might just be, I'm having a bad day, but dot, dot, dot. Um, it's important to, to raise that. Otherwise, keep it to yourself. Okay, so what to communicate? I have yet to meet a leader in, uh, I've coached thousands of leaders at this point. I have yet to meet a leader who loves a surprise. You know, surprises are hard to, to negotiate, especially when our agendas are packed to the gills already. So be quick with data or events that you think will turn into a unpleasant or pleasant surprise. Um, and be gentle about it. Uh, the, the tips from the hostage negotiators, etc., say preface it with a warning blow. You're not going to like what I have to say. Uh, you might want to sit down. Uh, I have some bad news. Those are all good preface statements so they can brace themselves for the unpleasant thing you're about to announce. Timing. Timing is another thing you want to communicate. Um, it will be ready today. It will not be ready today. I, we're early. We are on a trend to be late. Whatever those things are, be sure that you communicate timing. Uh, decisions. As I said, I'm responsible for this. I made the decisions to do this. That way people know how it affects them. Now, they might say, hey, you should have consulted with me. Well, that's another conversation. You, you probably need to break off and have that discussion. Um, unexpected delays, consequences, benefits. Sometimes even a benefit is something that needs to be communicated right away that they didn't anticipate. Uh, the joke in the software world is uh, that is not a bug, that is an unanticipated feature, <laughs> right? And so sometimes we need to know the whole pharmaceutical industry is built on, oh, this had a side effect that we can market. Um, so think about those benefits and how you may need to prepare for uh, how your customer base may react or your employee base may react to those. Um, if you need help, um, if you're struggling, you need a connection, you need an introduction, you need more time, you need a tool, uh, you need training, all of those things, um, that kind of help that you need needs to be communicated. Wins, of course, we, we don't want it to be like the news cycle where it's like war, 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 death, death, death. Oh, and then look at this happy puppy. But we do want some wins. Like, hey, so-and-so had a, a personal event, maybe a birthday, a, a baby, something like that. Or it could be something like, hey, we won this account. We, we had a bonus um, sale that we didn't anticipate whatever those things might be, com communicate that. And then of course, praise. Um, we're gonna talk more in, later about praise specifically, but this idea of, you know, I needed help and Joe pitched in to help me because he had a little bit of breathing room. Um, I couldn't have done it without Joe. Those kinds of things I think are really helpful to communicate. Um, where to communicate? 
So I, we talked about this earlier. These are just some suggestions about urgent, important, urgent, etc. I would suggest you flash this slide up there. If you're, by the way, if you're uh, watching, you can see this slide. If you're listening, you can go out to our YouTube channel and you can check out the where to communicate slide that basically um, gives you kind of a straw dog that you can show to your staff saying, hey, this is how I think we should communicate. Let's let's discuss, and then you've got you know something a, a line in the sand that you can debate. Okay, and then finally, uh, responding. We're not in a dictatorship. It's not that all of the communication goes from the leader downstream. Um, it goes back and forth. So we do need to acknowledge. Um, we need to restate our understanding. We need to confirm deadlines, expectations, and scope. And then uh, in the getting things done fashion, what are the next actions, right? What are the action items that come from these developments? Um, we want to be honest um, with our attitudes. So we want to voice our opinions if appropriate. And again, avoid the passive aggressive grousing. You know, raise your issue if you don't get your way, depending on how your team votes. Accept it, move on. So, um, next time we are going to be talking about conflict resolution in teams. So it's a it's a very natural follow on to I didn't get my way. <laughs> um, I wrote a book about this. So I can't wait to talk more about this and then the feedback that I've received after speaking about the book um, around the world here. So we'll talk about conflict resolution in teams next time. Um, please don't forget to invite your friends, share about the podcast or our YouTube channel. Um, a thumbs up or a five star review always helps us, gets the news out to others. Um, you may be wondering, hey, how can I use Shauna in my, with my team? And it's everything from leadership coaching, team coaching, and workshops, but things that's like a um, new team or teams that have merged, a new leader in transitioning to new leaders, uh, team retreats, team offsites. Those are all great reasons to engage with me. Um, also, if you wanted to do a DISC workshop to find out how your team members prefer to communicate, which is a whole nother level on top of this, um, that's a workshop that we can do with you as well. So you can contact us uh, with the contact information here, um, podcast at seanacorden.com or seanacorden.com. You can see us there. So until next time, take good care. Thank you for listening to Playbook for Performance. To learn more about Shauna Corden, her consulting programs and tools, please visit her website at shaunacorden.com and follow us on social media at Shauna Corden.